Who disturbs my slumber? Sorry for the shaky cam, but I was so excited how the cake turned out. Just that left eye, I'm just too impatient. But I love the most important part being the light coming from the mouth. First, I made two batches of my classic chocolate cake, but skipped the cacao this time. You can watch that recipe here. I cut out two trapezoids, which will act as the lower and upper part of the jaw. One smaller and narrower part is for the opening of the mouth itself. Before I start any kind of serious stacking, I check if I'm happy with the height and general shape of the cake. First thing to do here was to cut a slope for the back of the head slash cave entry. I realized then that the trapezoid shape I cut wasn't quite wide enough for those broad cheeks of our Cave of Wonders, so I cut two pieces of the cake we had left over and made them a tad smaller by cutting off the upper layers. As the mouth is the entry to a staircase, we got to carve that out as well. So here I'm making a slope and then take a big round cookie cutter for the entry itself. If you don't have a cookie cutter like this, you can use a glass as well. As I want the light to come out from there and I didn't want any electrical light inside the cake for any amount of time, I cut a fairly big hole into the cake board. Finally, I can start stacking the cake. I slather on some chocolate ganache, including the hole I cut. We don't want crumbs flying around. Then it's time for the middle layer, where I cut a bigger opening so that it can look like a slope. I really thought that the modeling chocolate would support the cake of its own. So I just inserted some thick straws to support the cake. Again, some chocolate ganache and here we have the last layer. I didn't like how the lower part stood out too much, so I cut that out as well. Before I put the cheeks into their place, I added quite a bit of ganache and spread that evenly. When they were in their place, I rounded the top part off a bit and then we got the final ganache layer. I'm covering the whole cake in ganache and fill any gaps or harsh corners with that as well. You can't ever have too much chocolate, right? I let that rest in the fridge for a bit so that the ganache won't be too sticky when I start applying the modeling chocolate. This is the first time ever that I used modeling chocolate, so forgive me if I make any obvious mistakes. So before I make any detail, I needed to start with the inner parts of the cake. Here I'm laying out smaller sheets of chocolate to cover the inner parts. Man, this is a shaky situation. Working from a hole on the bottom. It's quite a rig, just a few glasses. As I was again not happy with the shape of the lip, I rounded off a bit and cut a crevice for the tongue so that it can lay down right. Then I took a fairly thick layer and put that into its place. For the dent of the tongue, I used the side of a spoon and smoothed the rest out as best as I could. Now comes the part I was most scared of. The tiny thing in the throat, which is apparently called the uvula. I hope I pronounced that right. I just took a small piece of the modeling chocolate and put it onto a toothpick, which I just stuck in. I didn't like the position of it at all though so I took my tweezer and put it a bit further in the back. The hole on the bottom was real handy to smooth out the chocolate and help it stay in its place. It is just too bad that this part won't be seen because of my inexperience. <sighs> Never mind. Next I cover the lower part and upper jaw with some more muddling chocolate so that I'll be able to attach the fangs of the Cave of Wonders. Then, just like I did with the uvula, I used a small bit of a toothpick and pressed that into the place I wanted it. Sadly, the right one will later fall off as I didn't smooth out the seam of it enough. Don't make the same mistake and use some molten chocolate which I realized 
way too late. For the middle teeth, I just put a small snake of chocolate in place and pushed in the shapes I wanted. Before I add the lower fangs, I close off the rest of the lower jaw. As these fangs won't need to hover, I just smooth them out. Because I didn't like how the upper teeth turned out, I cut out the lower parts directly and glued them on with a small snake of modeling chocolate that I heated up over an open flame. Don't do that. I was stupid. Don't be stupid like me. I put this into the fridge so that it would harden securely. Now finally I can put a big layer of modeling chocolate to cover all the exposed parts of the cake. I cut off the excess and smooth it onto the cake. For the lip I roll out a long piece and cut it flat. To keep my modeling chocolate workable I warm a small pot and put it over the chocolate. Don't overdo it with the heat though. You don't want the chocolate too soft. It gets all oily and it's not really good. Now I'm putting the lip onto its place and cut the excess off. As these parts will be visible, at least to some degree, I smoothed it out first with a spoon and then with a small ball tip. As I wanted the exaggerated lip from the animated movie, I put a long piece onto it while being careful not to squish it down anywhere. I just smooth in the ends so that it looks seamless. This part is the end for my cake, at least partially. I add this thick layer of modeling chocolate for the whiskery part and make sure it looks round on the ends. When that's securely in place, I can make the indentations like they were in the movie. And here comes the heaviest part and the reason why I should have put a supportive cake board. The nose. The shape was easy enough to form, but the eventual weight closed the mouth more than I even expected. I was so absorbed with sculpting this cake that my mom pointed out how the upper jaw just slowly came down. I pinched the middle of the nose so that it looks just right and I used my ball point to form the holes for the nostrils. I smooth out the upper part and finally it's time for the eyes. It seems easy enough, or so I thought at least. I played around so much to make him look menacing and not slightly surprised and I tell you it's, <laughs> it was harder than it looks. For the cheeks, I applied another layer of chocolate so that I can push in the indentations. I cut out the excess and smoothed the corners out with a slightly warm spoon. That's why I had the candle in the corner. I push in slightly to make these shapes and do the same for the other side. For the ears, I rolled out a thin layer of modeling chocolate and cut out the shape I wanted. I pinched the ends together so that the ears get some depth. As the chocolate is still warm, I used a steering thing underneath it and put the other ear into its place in the same way. Then I smooth out the ends of the chocolate onto the head and make a small snake for the earring. I use a regular needle to just keep it in place temporarily. Before I put it into the fridge so that the ears can harden, I made a little contraption so that the mouth won't close off completely. Once it has cooled off, I can remove the wooden thingies and the needle as well. And see? It is holding up just right. I'm really loving this aspect of working with modeling chocolate. Finally. I add a thick snake of modeling chocolate for the fluff under the cheeks. I thought some toothpicks and smoothing on would hold it in place, but it was just too heavy. And maybe I was too tired at that point. I finally decided to use some molten chocolate, applied it carefully and it worked like a charm. 
I was so happy with the way it worked, I directly applied the molten chocolate on the other side and directly added the fluffy thing. As a last touch, I made the indentations for the fluff and we're finally done. Now the most fun part, the painting. As the cave is opened at night and I wanted to have a nice contrast with the ivory color of the chocolate, I chose some blue food colorant and applied that. When I wanted to add a bit of color into the mouth, the right upper fang fell off and here you see me trying to attach it again. But the gap was just too small and I didn't want to ruin anything else. I had actually planned to have some wireless LEDs for the eyes, but I couldn't find the ones I wanted. So I opted for some white food coloring. But as I'm impatient, I didn't wait for the blue to dry and directly slathered it on. While correcting the left eye, I overdid it and that's why that one looks a bit different. But otherwise, I'm still happy with the result. As for the prop up, I placed the cake onto a glass baking tray and put a nice bright light underneath it. I got a big dark blue cloth around and ta-da, here you have it. For my first modeling chocolate cake, this went better than I thought. It indeed was quite an experience. What should I do next? Let me know in the comments below. I have a few ideas myself, but it is always great to hear from you guys. To help us grow as a channel, don't forget to drop a like and share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe if you don't want to miss our weekly videos. Thank you for watching and see you next Friday.